Amen. Amen. I'm going to have Jesus 474. Is that different from the old I'd rather have Jesus in silver and gold.
me too. There was something that just moved in when we saw that building. Same Jesus, same Lord, same everything. Yeah. Uh, we just need to get free. I'm not saying we might we might have good services and things like that, but it, maybe it's just me. If, if y'all feel that way, or is it just me? Maybe it's just me. Uh, but let's sing that one more time. Think about He is Lord. I was on my way to hell. He spoke to me. Bill, I was lost. On my way, he didn't have to do that. Gave me a home in heaven. Saved me. Gave me a home in heaven. And he's my Lord and I love him. I love him dearly. Yes. And I just want to praise him. And thank you for saving me. Thank you for the Galilean Baptist Church and our yes. brothers and sisters that I fellowship with. I don't know what I would do without my church family. Yes. I really don't. And uh, let's sing it one more time. We'll let the preacher come preach to us. He is Saved your soul and saved my soul. Mm -hmm. yeah. Same God who, who uh, came to this world as a man has not lost any of his power, any of his presence, any of his knowledge, any of his wisdom, any of his ability. He's the same God. Yes. He's the same God. Always. He has not changed. We change. You ever change? Yeah. <laughs> Can people change? Yes. Absolutely. We're not God. God is the one that's unchanging and mutable. We're not like that. Mm -hmm. We change. Um, meditate on that. He is Lord. You know, I'm glad He's great, but I'm equally glad that He's good. Because if He wasn't good, Yes. Yeah. He's the Lamb of God. One day the wine will lay down with the Lamb. Put those together for a minute. That'll help you. 
What a great thought. Let's go to Matthew 13. I'll give you a quick challenge tonight, can I? Would you agree tonight that God wants to do a great work in your life? Your life, not about yours. Would you agree with me on that? Yes. Yeah. Would you agree God wants to do a great work in our church? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Would you agree with me that God is greater than the task at hand? That we've got a lot of tasks that are at hand. And that he has the power to enable us to accomplish those tasks. Would you agree with that? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Matthew 13. We'll start reading verse 53. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, get that. So Charlie, can you step out there and check on that for me? Thank you. Brother Tim Fultz, can you step out there and wait for me? Thank you. I need you to go as quickly as you can. Notice it says when he came when he's coming to his, his own country. His own country. You would think that if anybody would receive Jesus and follow him and do what he says, you'd think it'd be his, the people of his own country. But the Bible says in John 1, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. He taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished, and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? He's talking about Jesus. Then we just saw his, his siblings' names. And his sisters, are they not all with us? Which then hath this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, Prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. One of the saddest phrases in the whole Bible mm -hmm. is verse 58. You see it? Mm -hmm. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. He did not many mighty works there in his own country, in his own, around his own people, the people who knew him and knew his, obviously knew his family. Uh, they had heard him. They, they, were, they were amazed by him. They were actually so, they were so in such unbelief, they were actually offended in him. And he did not many mighty works. Let me give you something. If you miss everything else, then maybe this will help you. And I think I could probably say this and close it down and be done and actually get something from it. Our faith is not built on what God does, but who God is. Amen. His actions, don't miss what I'm about to say. If you don't listen to this part, you're going to think I'm saying something heretical or something. His actions, from time to time, differ and change. But his character, who he is, never changes. Okay. You with me on that? No. God deals with you maybe a little bit differently than he does with me because I'm an individual and you're an individual. So his actions may change from time to time. I'll be honest, I'm glad he doesn't deal with me like he did with people in the Old Testament. I mean, if there's not a clear example there, I'll be honest, I wouldn't have made it to the age of about 12. I'll just be honest, alright? Uh, they would have stoned me to death multiple times uh, because of some of the commands there. I'm glad God doesn't deal with us under the law. He deals with us under grace. I'm thankful for that. But, we need to understand that God's character never changes. 
It says here in verse 58, he did not many mighty works. Let me show you some, just a couple reasons why God didn't do many works or Jesus didn't do many works here in his own country. And they're in the negative sense, and I hate to be that way, but um, let's be honest. Verse 58 is kind of negative. He did not many mighty works there. That's a negative thought. There's nothing positive about that. Uh, he did not many mighty works there. So let me give you some ideas and some ways and some reasons why uh, Jesus did not do many mighty works there. And let this be a warning to Galilean Baptist Church that if we fall into any one of these uh, traps, I guess we could say, he will not do many mighty works here. The Bible says in verse 54, just the last part, you'll see where they were astonished and said, we'll pick up our reading from there, whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary, his brethren, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence, whence then hath this man all these things? I'm going to say this, and I, I want, give me a chance to explain it, though, when I tell you, okay? One reason Jesus didn't do many mighty works in his own country, his own area, with his own people, is because they limited God. They limited God. They were wondering who Jesus is. They questioned who Jesus was. They couldn't understand how a man who was not educated could have this kind of wisdom and power. They were trying to figure out how a man in their human eyes, in their thinking, they said, don't we know his father, Joseph the carpenter? Now, they didn't understand that his father was in heaven. But in their own thinking, they said, we know him. We know his father. He was in a carpenter's shop. We know who his mother is. We know who his brothers and sisters are here. His brothers are named and his sisters, they're all with them. And we know who he is. Where I mean, We know where he comes from. I'm reminded of John where he says, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Where did he get this power from? Who did he get this authority from? How did he get this knowledge? Before we get too critical of him, we say things like this. How are we going to get that money for the project? We'll say something like this. I'm not capable of teaching a, a people or passing out a gospel track or winning a soul to Christ. We'll, we'll say things like that. And we're putting it all on us instead of realizing who God is. We seem to only do what we think we can do in our own ability. And that's the limit of our faith. We bring God down to our human level. We only trust God for what we are think, what we think we're capable of doing and giving and being. But God is beyond that. Listen, somebody once said years ago, God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. Don't put your limitations on God's infinite power. God will not do many mighty works if we limit him. Don't limit God. Verse 57, and they were offended in him. Now that's a strange way of thinking about this. They were offended in him. The word offended means to stumble and fall and never get back up. Now the Bible says, I think it's in Proverbs, that a just man falleth seven times. And he gets right back up. He may get offended. He may stumble and fall. But he rises again. These people, it just says they were offended in it. They were offended. So much so that Jesus knew what they were thinking. And what was in the heart of men. So he said, a prophet is not without honor. Save in his own country. His own respect. Or his own, his own house. He, he, was, he, he was saying that a prophet has respect and has honor unless he's in his own country, around his own people. They knew it. You see, they had a distorted view of God. They refused to understand and accept the fact that Jesus was not of a common place as they were. I believe many people today are being influenced by people who have a distorted view of God. I'm going to say that again. Many people today, and I'm not talking about the world, I'm talking about Christians. I'm ministering to the saints right now. The saints of God many times are influenced by other people who have a distorted, a wrong view of God. We are devaluing God and exalting man. 
We are humanizing God and deifying man. Now, we shouldn't be, but I know a lot of people, and I know, unfortunately, I know people who claim to be children of God who are doing just that. Look, don't stumble and falter and be offended in the fact that God is not like man. Be thankful that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts, and they're higher than ours. Be yeah. thankful, but don't stumble and be offended and fall at that fact. Be thankful that he is sovereign, he is holy, he is more than capable, he's not like us. Our distorted view of God will cause verse 58 to happen if we're not careful. He did not many mighty works. Verse 58, and I'll be done. He did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Now, I know I, I mentioned that a little bit this morning. Having faith in God and believing in God. But because of their unbelief, now we could stop and stay on that and do a topical study for the next month or so and still not exhaust this one thing of their unbelief. But suffice it to say this, God is limited by a few things. He's limited by his word. He's limited by his own character. He's also limited by our unbelief. Think about that. He healed a blind man. I want to preach on this tonight. God wouldn't let me. This other thought. Maybe I'll do it some other time if the Lord will let me. I'll prepare a sermon on it. Just couldn't bring it tonight. He healed a blind man. Two blind men, excuse me. He said, be it unto you according to your faith. This morning I asked you, how faithful are you? Tonight let me ask you, how full of faith are you? Be it unto you according to your faith. This mighty works that he did not do there, when you study that out, it's very simply, uh, it's it mentioned in verse 54, again, whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Those are miracles. Those are, it references God's power, that word mighty. I'm afraid we've gotten to the point in church's day where we just want God to work. And we forget about the word mighty. We're satisfied with God. You just do some little thing over here and we'll be happy. It's to say, Lord, do a mighty work. The word mighty and work together, the word mighty has the idea of God's effective, his mighty, his explosive, his life-changing, his chain-breaking, his sin-conquering power. That's the kind of work you and I need tonight. That's the kind of work that other people need that we can show them, we can, we can present to them, we can help them have. God wanted to do that work there. I don't believe, if Jesus, if Jesus did not want to do a work there, I don't think he would have went, but he went to him. He wanted to do a work. Can I tell you that I believe God wants to do a mighty work in this place, in this church, more than we want it. It wasn't his fault that he didn't do it. It doesn't say he did not many mighty works there because he didn't want to. It says because they didn't believe, because of their unbelief. Right. I often pray, when I pray for our church as a, as a whole, I'll often pray that God will do a mighty work and accomplish such a kind of work in this place that only he can receive glory for it. That the only way, when someone looks at Galilean Baptist Church saying, how in the world could that happen? There's only one answer, God. Amen. Yes. Not the preacher, not the congregation, not the pianist, not the sound guys, not the camera people, not our Facebook Live, but God. Amen. Yes, sir. But our lack of faith was going to hinder that if we're not careful. We'll hold back God's Power, his mighty works. 
Can I say this as kindly and boldly as I, as I can? We need to put our faith in action. Don't just say we believe. Let's put it into action and live like and do things like we actually believe. I believe, I truly believe it's all my heart. Anybody that's sitting right here right now could step out, step forward, and do great things for God. Excuse me. I don't know that we do things for him, but I do know I'm a co-laborer with him, so we can do great things with him. And he'll do great things with us. I believe any person sitting here tonight could have that. There's two groups, two enemies of the Christian that will tell you you can't. Number one is your flesh. How about you? My worst enemy is not the devil. It's the guy I look at every morning in the mirror. He's my worst enemy. And I can't stand him half the time. I'm talking about me. Me. So you look at like, who do you look at in the mirror? Me. Myself. The devil will also put those thoughts in your mind. I don't know if it's Satan himself, but a devil will. Yeah. I don't think I'm important enough for Satan to attack, but I think his demons sure will. I'll tell you that something's not possible. But I'm reminded when the Holy when, when an angel came to Mary, said, You're going to have a child. She said, how shall this be? That's where most of us live. We stop with that question. How shall this be? <laughs> Gabriel said, with man it may not be possible, but with God all things are possible. I reminded Jeremiah, God's talking to Jeremiah. He, he was the weeping prophet. Jeremiah was preaching. He was going on. We have no recorded converts of Jeremiah in 40 years of ministry for 40 years and we never read of one convert 40 years but he was just faithful and faithful Jeremiah was one of those guys that prophets in the Old Testament would come along and they would do one of two things they would, they would prophesy uh, for the people from God or that he would prophesy against the people and tell them you're under God's anger and wrath and curse there's a time Jeremiah and God were having a conversation God asked him a question. Jeremiah, is anything too hard for me? He says, no, Lord. Nothing is too hard for you. Now then God, just to solidify it, so Jeremiah know he got the correct answer on question one, he said, there is nothing too hard for me. Anything? Nothing. Anything and nothing. Is anything too hard for me? And he says, nothing is too hard. You're going to choose anything or nothing. I choose anything. That's what I want God to do. Anything he wants to do in my life, anything he wants to do in our church, that's what I choose. He did not many mighty works. I'm not going to rewrite the Bible. But I would like to write our future that would be history. And let's never let it be said he did not many mighty works at Galilean Baptist Church. Let it be said that he did many mighty works in that place. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you are capable of doing mighty works. I'm thankful that you desire to do many mighty works. Lord, I know that what will hinder those many mighty works being accomplished would be our unbelief, our distorted view of you, our misunderstanding of who, of who you are, what you're capable of. Lord, would you lead us? Holy Spirit, would you guide us into all of that truth that we need to understand and then help us to obey it and live it out?
Before I finish prayer, I want to ask a question, but it seems kind of trite. I'll be honest, it really seems trite to give a, a kind of decision-making on this an invitation. Because I don't want to sound like I'm being offensive or whatever, but let's be honest for just a minute with the Lord. struggle sometimes trusting God. Struggle with that unbelief issue. I believe, I really do think that uh, we won't struggle with the unbelief if we'll get the right view of God. See who he is. Not, not just what he can do, but see who he is. me and say tonight, Pastor, please pray for me. I will, I know God's dealt with me. I need to seek God for who he is yes. so he can help my unbelief that I have struggled with at times. Would you be able to lift your hand in the air with mine? Mm -hmm. Let's pray for each other. Let me see. I'm going to be able to remember your face for a minute. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, mine's up too, okay? So I'm asking you to pray for me. Thank you, Lord. Lord, give us a fresh vision of our God. Yes. Yes. Help us to see you for who you are. Lord, I would pray that you would give us a vision as Isaiah saw of the King of Kings, the King of Heaven sitting upon his throne high and lifted up. Or give us that kind of vision of our God. Yes. Lord, I would pray also as, as Isaiah prayed, that Lord, you would rend the heavens, that you would open the heavens and let us get a fresh glimpse of our God. Yes. Lord, show us yourself, reveal yourself to us. Every time we open the pages of Scripture, let us see our Savior. Lord, may we have a closer walk with you because of that. And may our unbelief shrink and may our faith and our belief in you and upon you grow. Lord, help us as that, as that grows. Help us to put that into action and obey what we know. I pray for our church family that you would encourage their hearts. Lord, don't just, they need encouragement. Lord, give them hope. You are the God of all hope. And we have you, so I pray that you would help us to have that hope that is you. Lord, I love you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for our time together. May we be conformed to the image of your son because we have been together today. Lord, thank you for letting us take a time to set aside as the Lord's day to worship you throughout the day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Before you go, real quick, I talked about the Rex McPherson the other day, sometime in the past week or so, and he said, thank you for praying for Christine, his daughter. She's obviously been at home and doing well. Said she's walking without any uh, cane or walker or anything, or anything getting around. He said she's not even dragging her feet very much. So uh, so he said it'll pass that on to you, so I'm letting you know thank you for praying for Christine. Uh, once you be praying uh, for Kevin Roselle, yes. we've been praying on Wednesday nights for uh, his two boys, their grandmother down in Florida. She's the one that's been taking care of them. For a couple weeks, we prayed for her. She's up in years, had COVID and some complications. She passed away the day before yesterday. So the Rosales are down in Florida sorting some things out, helping them. And uh, so I won't go into details, just to just pray for them. Pray for Brother Kevin uh, with decisions that need to be made and uh, wisdom and, and just all of those kinds of things that he needs right now. I know they would appreciate it. And uh, so be praying for them, all right? Pray for each other. Encourage each other. And uh, that would be great, all right? Wednesday night, be back in your place. We'll see you then. God bless you. Have a great week.